First we'll make that claim once we see our results, it'll be accelerated or not, I guess, depending on our ability. understand the uh, the truth of scripture you have to go back to the original languages and now you've written a book to show the original hebrew background of the gospels right what are you trying to demonstrate or prove here the theology you get in the churches can be so flat and unmotivating and when i started studying in hebrew the truth just started kind of jumping off the page. I know that's not very academic sounding, but that's no, the way, that's it, that's the way it felt. This has been translated by Dr. Miles Jones. Uh, he uh, has his PhD from the University of Texas. He's from Dallas right now. He's a linguist specialist. He has translated these and other inscriptions around the mountain. Other inscriptions around the mountain have biblical names. Yeah. Names that actually come from the Bible. This is called the Moses Stone. Uh, we have uh, some photos of this and, and a rolling on this. This particular stone here, uh, you can see. When last we spoke, we said that, well, we have more than we thought to talk about with uh, Hebrew linguist, uh, historical linguist, Dr. Miles Jones. Welcome back to the program, sir. I'm glad to be here. You know, I, I, we were talking before the cameras came on. We we're trying to uh, bring about this. What do we do next with uh, the authentication of the Hebrew Gospels? And I brought out the fact that, well, I'm from Canada. And when I was in Canada, we learned about Canadian history and we learned about American history. But it wasn't until I moved down to the United States that I realized that what we learned about American history in Canada was missing some things. So, I wanted you to see that. I'm not sure, but I'll plug in there. We are waiting for him to come on. It, it's not 100% uh, assured he can. He's lecturing right now in Texas. But before uh, we get going there, I, I wanted to take you to his website. It's uh, Jones Geniuses uh, Accelerated Learning, Mathematics, Reading, and Memory. The Knights and, uh, Templar. Uh oh, I forgot to turn this off. The Knights Templar. 
Yeah. Well, you, you know, Eugene, uh, um, a lot of you know him, but uh, he got to know Dr. Jones long ago, he said, under this Mensa kind of challenge or the, the PhDs of Mensa, Mensa with calculators versus these children that uh, could calculate faster than the geniuses themselves. Uh, that, at some point, was a huge passion of his. Um, and then you'll also see, let's see, there's other, like uh, this one right here. Uh, let's see, where do I go here? About the Hebrew program. So he has uh, direct to Hebrew that ties in with Jones' geniuses. And he shared this with me so that I could have something tonight. And that would be Dr. Miles R. Jones, Benai Emana Accelerated Education. He's based in Kerrville, Texas. And his website is jonesgeniuses.com. So be sure and check him out. But we can just look from the text here what he's about. Uh, the Hebrew program is a beginning course in reading the Hebrew Bible. But by the end of it, you will be able to read the Bible in Hebrew. The Hebrew Bible is called the Tanakh. Only the first five books are actually the Torah, though that word is sometimes used inclusively. We will also teach the Hebrew Gospels, though not in the beginning program as yet. Let me see if he's joined us. Let's see, we've got uh, a few others. So anybody can unmute. Um, let's see, did I mess that up? Mute upon Henry. Yeah. So you can you can unmute yourself. Okay. Very good. I uh, didn't want to mess that up. So I'll go ahead and and uh, record this session so that you can see it again. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on uh, Sons of of Israel and Levi dot org, which is a particular interest of mine and uh, so you can go back and review this the Hebrew Club is also going to be there with its materials and so if you look at sons of Israel and Levi org you'll see the uh, episodes here and I have sent you the uh, get your zoom game on if you want to change your name if you don't want it to be showing uh, and install your Hebrew keyboard. Very, very important to get that done so that your muscle memory is uh, going. You can do it on any computer, uh, Mac or PC, and it really helps me. And then uh, I have the week one lesson plan for learning the alphabet. You really should be able to learn the whole alphabet in one week. That, that should not be a problem. Um, also... Uh, going back to his curriculum, um, the Hebrew program, let's see, the Hebrew reading program contains the following materials. And so he has an Aleph, Bet, vowel pointing, and consonant cards. Um, I put a, uh, just for reference sake, I put one of uh, my own up here for you to get started with. Um, you'll be able to uh, view I put in a recognition there I've got a uh, tutorial video to give yourself a um, what you could do with your Hebrew keyboard and your uh, uh, your Hebrew letters along with some very important what I would call whoops I want to go on from there. So, for example, um, if you have the Aleph in the Cartoon Hebrew um, website, they use a headless man that, you know, is lifting weights and he's saying ah, and uh, and so uh, and so it goes with the bet and the vet, and the keys to get to them are down here at the bottom. If you if you've expanded your view enough to see it. Um, you know, a bit is is a B key. A bit with a degesh is a B with a plus sign. It's very, 
very simple to type in Hebrew when you're using the Tyndall uh, keyboard. So a gimel or or uh, uh, you know a base, you know, is a is a G because of the uh, G sound in English, and a dalet is a D sound, right? So the next letter is a hey, and uh, it is not an E because that's a vowel. Um, and so keep that in mind. Um, is uh, they're they're doing a good job. Tyndall does a good job of associating uh, sound-wise the uh, keys. So a hey is a is an H, and a vav is a V. So these are easy to type even for Gentiles. A Zion zebras are Zion cool. Um, well. Why not? It's a Z, um, and so on and so forth. And you have the hit of the uh, Hanuk Anakia or the Hanukkah, and it happens to be, uh oh, I put a nine there. It's really supposed to be an eight. There's a typo, and um, but hit is the eighth character, or has a value of eight, and it happens to be the uh, uh, the starting letter letter of Hanukkah. So, anyway. That, uh, that is available for you on the website um, and uh, also that Hebrew keyboard and then these, any of these videos that we're doing tonight. So our discussion is for you. It's for you to review and uh, to go over. Also to do it yourself. There won't be anybody uh, uh, minding you. Uh, on the other hand, when we get to the, um, the sessions, the half hour sessions we're going to break into groups so that we can be proctor and student to test us and to see what our progress is so come prepared um, next week we won't have a club meeting because of uh, well, Christmas Eve and uh, the following week is is New Year's Eve but I think I'll have a uh, lesson posted on vowel pointings uh, by next Wednesday so that you can learn those. For example, uh, I'm sure Nate Richardson, who does have a lot of experience in this group, uh, would know that the segul it looks like eggs, and it even sounds like eggs, and uh, it looks like three eggs, and you got the two eggs, and so on. And these are things we can learn uh, as coming to the language without any experience. And we'll be pronouncing Hebrew quite fast. Uh, it's it's almost as easy as pronouncing English, or excuse me, Spanish, and Romanized uh, Japanese. So that's kind of the experience I see with it. Um, I don't see Dr. Jones yet, which uh, he, you know, we'll go back over that in a minute. So. So we have the Aleph Bet cards that I just showed you uh, that, that Dr. Jones has developed. Learning Hebrew letter sounds and syllables, that's very important, and use them for practice along with a primer or a primer. Primer is excellent, and uh, the lessons are easy. It takes only three to five minutes or so per page. And uh, do five pages a day, so, you know, that's about a half an hour. You'll be reading Hebrew in two weeks. Now... I totally believe that. Um, I've been studying it on my own uh, because of my work, but I can't move as fast as if I had this this uh, curriculum available. The Torah readings start with Genesis chapters one to seven, along with the audio. Now that's extremely important to be able to hear it, so that um, you know when somebody does does speak it you're going to be able to hear it at least you may not be able to speak it but you are going to be able to hear it so okay um also he recommends the Zor zondervan uh, hebrew readers bible for your continuing practice i asked him on the phone uh, a couple of nights ago whether that was uh, required he said no uh that i think that's just another expense the Zondervan uh, Hebrew Reader's Bible um, can be accomplished with one of the Leningrad Codex uh, translations, including the free ones on the Jewish uh, Publication Society, JPS, 
also the Chabad translation uh, there in Brooklyn where I work. Uh, they're all free and I, I like to compare them uh, to the uh, King James Version and uh, the other English translations because no translation is an exact anything. Uh, it's a it's an art to translate and it's very easy to um, uh, mistranslate so that's uh, that's a given I think and we all kind of understand that so the direct to Hebrew mastery vocabulary uses uh, mnemonic pictures to make memorization of the vo vocabulary simple and easy there's a picture depicting the word meaning along with a sentence that not only gives the meaning of the word, but includes an English word that sounds somewhat like the Hebrew word. So I did that as best I could on the, um, uh, the little slideshow. You can print those out and test yourself. Uh, for example, you know, I, I printed mine out and, and folded it so that uh, somebody testing me can see uh, what it's supposed to be. And uh, um, so those are all already uh, all, uh, available to you. And, the way that Dr. Jones works is he wants you to learn the most common words first. Duh. And uh, the first 500 of the most frequently used words in the Bible account for 75% of all word occurrences. Now that's pretty big. So now you, all you're going to need to do then is uh, learn the 25% that come up that you don't understand. And there'll be plenty of tools we'll go over. Uh, I'll show you some of the ways that I've uh, muddled through to get it done before I learned about Dr. Jones. So, um, hmm, let's see, Eugene, what else am I supposed to talk about tonight um, before we kind of answer questions? Um, looks like we're still getting people coming in. Good, we have a good we have a good uh, crowd tonight. Um, thank you for all coming. And I'll uh, begin to answer questions as uh, best I can. As I said uh, before some of you came in, uh, Sons of Israel and Levi.org, which is a hobby interest of mine, uh, will be the host website for these materials. You'll see Accelerated Hebrew Club at the top and uh, you're welcome to use them to your heart's content. Uh, this club is meant to be free uh, of charge but the materials from Dr. Jones will not be free of charge. Um, he'll be uh, uh, he charges $130 plus seven for his workbooks. Now there may be a way um, for us to modify that a little bit if he doesn't have to ship and print them. Uh, that is a possibility. Uh, so the $137 assumes that you're going to receive from him the, sh the uh, printed material. Now undoing that you know, trust of copyright may not be so easy, but maybe the club can negotiate that with him. I haven't talked to him, but he's very open to anything like that. In fact, you know, he's open to a lot of things and he's not a, a man that uh, protects everything that's his. I'm sure you've met scholars that have done that. Um, but he's not that way to me. I, he just never reminds me of that at all. He's also written a lot of books. Uh, one of the, the ones that I just read was outstanding. Uh, Sons of Zion versus the Sons of Greece. And, you know, as a clueless Mormon kid growing up, I had no idea that the Gospels uh, by the you know the Apostle Matthew, for example, um, the disciple Matthew wasn't written in in Hebrew. I mean that wouldn't have made any sense to me. John uh, the Beloved not writing his in Hebrew that wouldn't have made any sense to me. Luke the uh, Gentile physician uh, I think that's been debunked and debunked. Uh, he was Hebrew, and so why wouldn't they write in Hebrew? Um, well, they did. And that's why, you know, we've, we inherited the Greek primacy uh, theory. We also inherited the Roman universality uh, theory. And these are, <laughs> these are things that we bring, uh, you know, we look at the, the uh, Christmas festival we're going to celebrate, supposedly, as a culture. 
and all of its baggage um, you know comes from all of those traditions we feel you know very strongly about them at least uh, I did growing up um, not so much anymore but what uh, what can I do um, to answer your questions and try to outline you know as I said We'll give lessons that we'd like you to follow as a club, um, almost like a congregation, almost um, of of uh, a Messiah lovers, including Dr. Jones. Uh, we're non-denominational, obviously. Uh, we're neither Mormon nor Jehovah's Witness nor anything. We just b believe and love Messiah, and so uh, that's the whole purpose of this club. Can I answer anybody's questions? Can I, can anybody, uh, you know, bring up something I forgot? We have eight minutes left. Oh, well, nobody's going to ask. I might as well say it. You forgot to ask whether we can sing the Psalms in ancient Hebrew. Ha! Well, you forgot to ask, but I didn't forget to tell you. One of the uh, music, muscle, memory, mnemonic um, techniques is to... Uh-oh, wait a minute. Somebody's calling. Why? What's going on, Eugene? You have us all muted. You can't ask anything. Oh, my heck. Well, I thought I unmuted everybody. That's yeah, terrible. Ask all to unmute. How's that? Does that work? Cool. What? <laughs> there. Thank you, uh, Director Eugene. Appreciate uh, that. I asked Shirley to do it, but she didn't. So the red line, the red phone line. Um, the so anyway, we can we you know. <laughs> Speaking of Avraham, uh, Nate Richards, if you're still here, um, he taught me a, 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 a hymn a long time ago. It, I'm, I'm think it's it was about 2012 or 2013, and it it kind of goes like this: goes Zetem la shalom, malachi la shalom, malachi elion. Now, I didn't even know what the heck I was singing, but now I know the words. <laughs> And it makes a lot more sense, so I really, I really like that. And it's easier to remember with music these words of this vocabulary we're learning. And through the work of, uh, of a, the late doctor, I blanked on it, she was in France. Uh, she has uh, these original Hebrew psalms that she says she's found the music notation for. So we're going to be able to bring them to life within our club and we're going to do it by singing our vocabulary and um, um, doing it you know social distance properly during the uh, pandemic and uh, we can I have uh, quite a bit of experience as a as an audio guy so I can uh, mix all of your beautiful voices into a choir won't uh, sound like any one person singing so anyway what can I? What can I? Questions can I answer? We have one question from uh, Brother Anderson um, Russell. Uh, there it is. Where is the document about Hebrew program? Document about. Hebrew. Well, the one you're showing on your screen it shows all the things that's going to happen. Is that a document we can read, or we can? The PDF. Well, it's not. Uh, it's the one that talks about here's the instructions for using the accelerated oh. you know, practice daily, yeah. use this worksheet, five page, all that. Can we get right. that? Right. That's, that's a summary. And yes, I will post. Well, I got to get permission to post that. Oh, okay. From Dr. Jones. But I think we can post that. And um, I can certainly outline it on uh, a slideshow or something like that. Um, also, you know, I, I I don't know how this is going to go, so um, I'm 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 on pins and needles. 
Also, I wanted to mention there's probably a way if you are unable to afford the workbooks, uh, whatever price we can negotiate with him. Um, maybe it's 137, maybe it's 137 minus printing and shipping. That would be nice so that he still has his intellectual fee. Uh, we certainly can get them printed here. And um, so there's nothing we can order yet, in other words. There is, but there's no shopping cart uh, for this product, not like Jones Geniuses. In fact, I was on the phone with him, uh, like I said, two nights ago, and he's running between uh, lectures. He's going crazy. And um, so people want to know uh, from him what, what's up. You know, they want, they want his knowledge. And his knowledge is these Hebrew Gospels. That's what's hot. Uh, that seems to be what God is bringing to the fore right now, our Hebrew Gospels, so that we know the depth of Scripture, so that we know what John uh, the Revelator actually said, and not what somebody uh, glossed over or changed. So one of those uh, very famous glosses or changes by in the Eusebius uh, period was John 6-4, when, um, you know, it, it says in, in, uh, in that verse that, Behold, the festival of the Jews, Passover, was nigh. What that did is it, through the uh, ministry of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Yoshia, from uh, 70 weeks, seven zero weeks, to three and a half years. And we were all taught, every one of us were taught, that his ministry was three and a half years. But in that one, one um, mistranslation, it could have been intentional. Uh, it was definitely, it wasn't written by a Hebrew person to say, and a festival of the Jews or a feast of the Jews, Passover was nigh. They wouldn't have made that mistake. Uh, if I may. Have, yeah, go ahead. Um, there's a couple more questions, but along the line of what you're just saying, one of the biggest faux pas in the New Testament is they say that uh, Yeshua, Jesus, gave us a new covenant. And if you read the actual Hebrew, it doesn't say a new covenant. It says a renewed covenant. So right. there's little things like that that you will never get um, in the modern translations because the Greeks did change it uh, when they separated from the Hebrew church from a renewed covenant to a new covenant. But also uh, two qu quick questions here. Um that it's okay if you're down for the 130 curriculum thing uh, that was asked. Um, you can order it from Miles Jones, and we you can go from there. Also, um, someone at uh, oh. Nathan also um, said, uh, "What's good in learning biblical Hebrew? Uh, how will it help in modern?" Uh, we're not learning Paleo Hebrew. We are learning modern biblical Hebrew from modern biblical translations, the same ones that the Hebrews use. So it, it's not like we're going back to old Paleo Hebrew. And the last question here, um, let me see. Oh, uh, primer. Let me see. Where is it? I thought the original Hebrew of the New Testament Gospels is lost. And that's what Dr. Miles Jones and Nehemia Gordon and Keith Johnson and Michael Rood and many others are uh, proving that, no, through critical reading of these manuscripts, we can prove uh, that they were changed, they were altered, uh, including that one. You know, Michael Rood spent how long on this uh, chronological Gospels? 30 years a long, long time, and it's really interesting that he could combine science, the uh, mirrors on the moon, and recreate what uh, people are now calling archaeoastronomy. Archaeoastronomy is was actually pioneered by uh, Dr. Miles Jones's uh, great aunt, and uh, that's pretty astounding right there that uh, he descends from her. And uh, you can change you can change the whole narrative of Joseph of Egypt from being a myth to an actual person, a vizier of Egypt, 
where everybody used to laugh that, um, you know, not everybody, but people that read the Bible would say, well, no, I believe it because I believe it's in the Bible. But scientists and archaeologists would say, well, prove it to me. And they couldn't because we had our timelines wrong. And so either Joseph was 200 years before uh, it actually happened or 200 years after. That's a 400-year swing of what actually happened. And when you can associate eclipses and star formations and other records, for example, if you go by the old or orthodox chronology of uh, archaeology, you would say that Solomon could not have been as rich as the Bible says because he was a mere king of the Iron Age. And Dr. Miles Jones just rips that to shreds. He says, no way was he a mere king of the Iron Age. He was of the Bronze Age and he was an ally of Egypt, just like the Bible says. Joseph was the Grand Vizier uh, of Egypt and he was immensely powerful. And so, you know, we've got to put our faith back on uh, to Scripture as it is written. And that's why, uh, you know, men like uh, Nehemiah Gordon are doing such great work because he's a Kararite. He only believes what is written. He'll look at it and say, is it written? If it's not written, he's not going to touch it. And uh, maybe we ought to be a little more like that uh, in our own uh, uh, spaces of, of religion and belief. Uh, just to suggest well, time, time is running out, and one yeah. last question was asked. Yeah. Uh, maybe we just focus on PowerPoints instead of the 130 package. There are 16 of us here. I don't know how many are interested in the package. So, uh, for you know, you're putting up the PowerPoint, or not PowerPoint, but the the uh, graphs and things. People can check those out, and we can use that. And it, you can download or access the Chabad um, scriptures online that have both the Hebrew and the English, as well as what Jonathan mentioned, the um, the other codex. The, the In, uh, Jewish Publication Society, JPS. Yeah, John JPS. Safaria, safaria dot, dot org. There's a lot of tools. I'll, I'll put those up. For three weeks, Dr. Jones is not going to be available uh, very much, uh, except maybe to answer a few of my questions. So we're going to continue to put up lessons. I think if you're interested in this, you'll learn the alphabet. That just seems easy. Also, if you're interested, you'll download the free keyboard and try it yourself. Uh, that seems easy. Once you get a taste, the red blood of um, of learning uh, this, you're going to love it. You're not going to want to. You're not going to want to leave it. I don't. I can't picture myself leaving it. So I'm going to stay right with it. Okay, we're at our time limit, Jonathan. Thank you. Pretty much. Yep. So thank you, everyone. Uh, anybody? Um, want to say something okay. well tonight was just an introductory to get us to let everybody know what we're going to be going over it but uh, when you can access on the website sons of israel levi.com the different uh, dot org thank you uh, yeah I, I got dot com on the brain the different charts and different things uh, for the keyboard etc that's J felt J felt twice J felt J felt at gmail dot com. Please uh, send me an email if you're interested to continue and you want uh, notifications. So I'll, you're on my list, and uh, I promise to do my best. And I hope uh, to see you again. And I hope that it grows because uh, we're at a beginning point. I guess we could, you know. Maybe the students become the teachers and it uh, forks out into other chapters of this. That would be great if that ever happened. But it's not the goal at the moment. The goal is so that I can learn vowels and uh, to read. So take this next three weeks and learn to read Hebrew. You can do that on your own. You don't need, uh, you don't need anything. So from our uh, uh, materials that we have for free. So. 
Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. Next time we meet is uh, the 7th of January, one day after the votes are counted by the vice president. That probably is no big deal day. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Never was in the past, so why would it be this time? Huh. Also, um, we'll break out into rooms, uh, into twos. Proctor and student, you test, test one another on the... Um, the alphabet by then, the vowel pointings by then, and some uh, vocabulary. So, see you then. I'll keep you informed. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming.